Spending holidays in Israel is an experience that will make your dreams come true. Uncover with us the legacy of the Roman Empire and touch one of the holiest places in the world with amazing sacral architecture. You will fall in love with splendid gardens full of colorful flowers or unique natural wonders, which you cannot find anywhere else. No matter if you are looking for breathtaking palace fortresses, the marvelous underwater aquarium world, or the best places for snorkeling and diving, Israel has it all. Haven't you already decided where to go on your visit to Israel? Discover with us the best places to see in this beautiful Middle Eastern country, which offers endless tourist attractions. Number 1. Haifa This major seaport found on Israel's Mediterranean coastline is also the third most populous metropolitan area in the country. Set upon Mount Carmel, its scenery and terrain are simply stunning. That is why we recommend starting to explore the town at the top of the mountain. Here you can take a walk along the Lewis Promenade, located a few minutes away from numerous museums. It is one of the most beautiful places for walks and sightseeing in the whole of Haifa. The Baha'i Gardens are found on the top of Mount Carmel. This is the most visited and the most beautiful tourist attraction in the whole city. Its total area is 200,000 square meters, and it is also the holiest site of the Baha'i faith. The gardens extend almost one kilometer in length and house 19 splendid terraces full of colorful flowers, waterworks, and small sculptures. In the middle section, Baha'i gardens surrounded the gold-caped shrine built in 1953. In this golden dome temple, the remains of the Prophet Bab are kept. The lower section of gardens opens to the German colony, a beautifully restored cultural and tourist center. This small area was founded in the late 1860s and built by German Protestants. Ben Grion Avenue, the main street in the German colony, is lined with distinct red-roofed trendy cafes, boutiques, and restaurants, where you can experience delicious Jewish and Arab cuisine. Be sure not to miss the Haf HaKarmel area, which is perfect for lovers of sunbathing, swimming, and relaxing on deck chairs. Dato and Zamir beaches are popular places for local visitors as well as for many tourists. In addition, those who love water sports will be pleased by surfing, windsurfing, and kite surfing, and extreme water sports like parasailing. This all can be done off of the coast. Did you know that Haifa is the only city in Israel with a subway system? The Carmelit has six stations and a 1.8 kilometer long track. It is believed to be the smallest subway system in the world. Number two, Eilat. Welcome to Eilat, Israel's southernmost city on the Red Sea. This port and beautiful resort area is one of the world's best destinations for snorkeling and diving. With an average of 360 sunny days a year, you are assured of great weather for many water sports. You will not be bored at night in this city. Eilat has the most clubs, bars, and other entertainment venues per capita in Israel. The must-visit attraction is the magnificent Coral World Underwater Observatory, the biggest public aquarium in Israel. It hosts over 800 species and about 20,000 animals. This place offers several different exhibitions and pools, for example, the turtle and stingray pools. In the middle of one of the pools, there is a small sand island for female turtles to lay their eggs on, or the shark world, with an amazing exhibit holding 3 million liters of water and featuring 20 shark species, rays, and corals. There is also an underwater tunnel with a breathtaking view of the colorful underwater world. What could be more exciting than meeting lovely dolphins? At Dolphin Reef Beach, you have a fantastic opportunity to go snorkeling or scuba diving with these friendly and playful sea animals. For those who do not want to get wet, there is a jetty jet out into the water, which is an ideal spot for dolphin observation. Are you an enthusiastic diver or enjoy snorkeling? The trip to the protected Coral Beach Reserve will be the highlight of your Eilat holiday. This area is even suitable for newbie divers, as they are well catered for by local dive tour agencies. 
so everyone can enjoy a fantastic view of one of the world's most magnificent coral reefs and loads of vibrantly colorful fishes and other incredible sea animals. If you're looking for desert adventures, such as Jeep tours, unique camel rides, cycling, hiking, or even rock climbing or rappelling down the cliffs, perfect for extreme sports enthusiasts, Timna Valley National Park, located 30 kilometers away from the city, is the right place for you. This area, situated in the majestic Negev Desert, is famous for its bizarre rock formations that have been sculpted by wind and rain. There is also an artificial lake, which has become a popular recreational area. Timna Park has excellent facilities, and even restaurant and bike rentals are there. Did you know there are the world's oldest copper mines? The mining has been going on since the 6th or 5th millennium BC. Number 3. Caesarea The ancient city, also known as Caesarea Maritima, or Caesarea Palestini, is found on the territory of today's Caesarea National Park. The site has been occupied by Phoenicians since the 4th century BC. In the 1st century BC, Herod the Great built there a colossal harbor, and the city grew to have 100,000 residents. Later, the city became the capital of the Roman province. Since then, the town has lost its earlier importance, but in the 11th century, it was conquered by the Crusaders and they made the city into an important port again. Crusader City is still surrounded by medieval fortifications and moats, which prove the sophistication of the defensive system of that time. Be sure to reserve at least half a day to explore this vast complex. In addition to the remains of imposing public buildings and baths, you can find here also some splendid ancient mosaics, full of colorful motifs of animals and plants. There is also a reconstructed 2,000-year-old Roman theater in the same area. It is the oldest of its kind in the Eastern Mediterranean, and it can accommodate an audience of 4,000. To this day, the most prestigious events are organized here, featuring world-class stars such as Brian Adams, Alanis Morissette, Bjork, or Eric Clapton. Outside the Caesarea National Park stretches out the Aqueduct Beach, one of the best beaches in Israel. This unique sandy avalanche is flanked by a stunning ancient aqueduct, older than 1900 years. However, there is no lifeguard, but swimming is not forbidden, so it is busy on summer weekends. Close distance to an archaeological site spans a range of boutiques and brilliant restaurants. After exploring this breathtaking place, you can relax by looking at the crystal clear waters of the Mediterranean Sea and tasting the great local cuisine. Number 4. Eka This charming city with approximately 50,000 inhabitants, known locally as Akko or Akka, is one of the oldest ports in the world. A larger town was set up between 1500 and 2000 BC. Since then, this place remains one of the oldest continuously inhabited settlements on Earth. Discover with us a rich culture and historical heritage shaped by the Romans, Ottomans, Crusaders, Mamluks, Byzantines, and British. The harbor in the city was a particularly important and busy place from the classical age right until the medieval period. The original harbor is now silted up, and all that is left in this small, quiet fishing harbor full of colorful local fishing boats and yachts. From there, it is possible to take a unique tour of the city walls from the sea. Close to harbor is Khan al Umdin built in 1784. It is the largest caravansary in the city and served as an important trading spot in the past. Merchants with camel caravans arriving in Eka used the Khan as storage and stables, while the second floor functioned as a hostel. Later in 1906, a clock tower was added next to the main entrance. If you are a lover of Crusader history, be sure to visit an extraordinary underground passageway, the Templar's Tunnel discovered in 1994. It was built by the Knights Templar, a medieval Christian military monastic order. The secret way connects the place of today's Khan al Umdin with a Templar fortress that no longer exists. It provided an escape to the sea in case of an attack. On the other side of the old city of Eka, north of the city walls is the Citadel Building. This massive Ottoman fortification 
was built on the foundation of the 12th and 13th century Crusader Citadel. During the 20th century, the Citadel was used as a prison and as a site for gallows by the British and nowadays houses the Museum of Underground Prisoners. In the underground spaces of the Citadel, there is the Crusader City Historic Site, which includes a fascinating series of six connected Gothic vaulted halls, which also includes this grand Knights Hall. This place was once headquarters for the Knights Hospitaller, a medieval and early modern Catholic military order founded in the early 12th century. Right next to the Citadel, you can discover the secrets of the 18th century Turkish bath, Hammam al-Basha. In Ottoman times, this area was the social place for the rich and influential ones. Here you can enjoy a unique performance telling the story of the last bath attendant. Drawing the visitors into the story with an impressive sound and light show, this environment comes to life. Number 5. Masada The ancient fortress Masada in the Judean desert was built in 30 BC by King Herod, Roman Jewish client king of Judea. It is one of the most visited attractions in Israel and is situated on the top of an isolated rock plateau with an extreme height of 450 meters. It is a part of Masada National Park and provides visitors with a breathtaking view of the world-famous 20-kilometer distant Dead Sea. For hiking adventurers, there are two path options to the top, both very steep. Snake Path from the eastern side gains around 300 meters in elevation. The ancient Roman Ramp Path has a smaller but still challenging elevation gain and is accessed from the western side of the mountain. Considering the local climate and hot temperatures, we recommend that you save your strength for a unique tour and use the cable car, which will transport you comfortably in a few minutes from the tourist center at the foot of the mountain to its top. As soon as you leave the cable car station, your exploration can begin in the impressive northern complex. When King Herod built the fortress as an emergency refuge in case of a coup, he heavily fortified Masada and created a beautiful hinterland inside, reminiscent of Roman palace culture. In addition to many warehouses and administrative buildings, there is also a large Roman-style public bath with a first-century BC caldarium, room with a hot plunge bath using an underfloor heating system. In this section, you should also visit the Northern Palace, the most impressive structure remaining. It is built on three rock terraces. The upper terrace, used as a residence, was Herod's private quarters. There were four grand bedrooms and a large semicircular colonnaded balcony allowing spectacular views of the Dead Sea. The middle terrace had two concentric walls with columns and indicate a religious cultic purpose. The third and the lowest terrace was intended for entertainment and relaxation. This place even had its private bathhouse decorated with beautiful frescoes of multicolored geometrical patterns or painted in imitation of cut marble. On the western side of the fortress is the largest building in Masada, Western Palace, covering over 4,000 square meters. It used to serve as the main administrative center of this area, as well as the King's Ceremonial Palace. In addition to the royal apartment, there is also King Herod's throne room. In the whole complex, including Western Palace, were discovered many gorgeous colorful floor mosaics full of floral and geometric patterns, typical for Roman and Byzantine periods. Number 6. Dead Sea The lake's surface is 430.5 meters below sea level, and owing to its shores, it is the lowest land-based elevation on the Earth. With 304 meters deep, it is the deepest hypersaline lake in the world. The water there is about 10 times saltier than the ocean, and it is one of the saltiest bodies of water in the world. This incredible lake has such a density that swimming is like floating. This salinity creates a harsh environment in which plants and animals cannot flourish, hence its name, Dead Sea. For thousands of years, the lake attracted visitors from around the Mediterranean basin. There was one from the world's first health resorts more than 2,000 years ago for Herod the Great. Today, there are many hotels and holiday resorts near the lake, which allow visitors to take full advantage of the relaxing and healing potential of this special place. 
The water of the Dead Sea contains a unique combination of 26 beneficial minerals used for body and skincare products. And the air in the area contains minimal amounts of dust and allergens compared to other places in the world. Apart from swimming in the Dead Sea and the sulfur-rich pools of the nearby spas, many smear themselves with black mud on the lake shore, which has an especially high concentration of salt and minerals, which relieves various skin problems. Number 7. Beit Xian. The biblical city in the north of the country is at the same time one of the oldest in Israel. Its settlement began 8,000 to 7,000 years ago. The complex of city ruins is part of Beit Xi'an National Park, open to the public, and it is one of the most important and largest archaeological sites in the country. Before an earthquake destroyed ancient Beit Xi'an in 749 AD, around 40,000 residents lived there. On the elevated mound, you can explore the remains of the Canaanite and Egyptian cities. In the 15th century BC, the area became a center of the Egyptian imperial administration of the region for more than 300 years. Many artifacts were found at the site, such as the Egyptian inscription on the white stone. From this period, the best preserved is the Egyptian governor's house, built in the 12th century BC. The lovers of the Roman period will be impressed by the remains of the metropolis. There exists a Roman theater built during the late 2nd century AD. Originally, it had seating for 6,000 spectators, of which only one-third excellently preserved to this day. Even today, it is still possible to see the stage, which was richly decorated with columns and statues. Beside the theater, on the southwestern side, is located the largest of the two bathhouses in Beit Xi'an. This 1,600-year-old public complex is still relatively well-preserved and you can find there places for working out as well as for relaxing. For instance, hot and tepid bathing halls with an underfloor heating system, which pumps hot air under the floor and heats the waters. While sightseeing this fascinating place, do not overlook the remarkable colorful floor mosaics. Ranging from the unique 6th century AD mosaic of Tyche, Roman goddess of good fortune and patron of the city, to the colorful plant mosaics in the Byzantine Agora, which was a meeting area and a marketplace. Number 8. Nazareth. The childhood home of Jesus is often considered to be the cradle of Christianity. This largest city in the northern district of the country is also Israel's largest Arab city, with a mixed population of Christian and Muslim Arabs. Moreover, with many monuments and ancient buildings, Nazareth is an important place for pilgrims and tourists from all over the world. The number one attraction is the Church of the Annunciation, also referred to as the Basilica of the Annunciation. This Catholic church is one of the largest Christian sites of worship in the Middle East. The present-day building was built in 1969, but archaeological evidence shows that the first version stood here at least from the 3rd century AD. In the central part, you can see a large octagonal opening on the floor of the church. It offers a view of the publicly accessible lower level and the older structures below. The Grotto of the Annunciation. This is the place where the Archangel Gabriel announced the birth of Jesus to the Virgin Mary, and it is also believed to be Mary's home, where Jesus spent his adolescence. In total, there are 18 churches of the Annunciation in Nazareth including St. Gabriel's Church from the 4th century, also known as the Greek Orthodox Church of the Annunciation. According to Eastern Orthodox belief, this is the place where the Virgin Mary was drawing spring water at the time of the Annunciation. The water from the spring not only still runs inside the apse of the church, but also feeds the adjacent site of Mary's Well, found on the south across the church square 130 meters away. The Old Town of Nazareth is the most famous for its historical and extremely popular shuk, the Arabic term for a market. This well-known attraction is full of colorful stalls and a variety of merchandise, where you can find many traditional Arab products. It is the perfect place to buy oriental souvenirs. This market district also houses the synagogue church. The 19th century structure was built on top of the ruins of the original synagogue, 
and today it belongs to the Greek Catholic community. According to the Christian tradition, down under the church, there is a place where Jesus studied and prayed 2,000 years ago. Number 9. Tel Aviv. Nicknamed the White City, thanks to its Bauhaus architecture, it is a famous tourist destination thanks to its beaches, cafe culture, and intense nightlife. The most popular beach in Tel Aviv is centrally located Frischman Beach with white sand and crystal clear water. After you enjoy swimming or other sport activities here, there are many food and beverage options in surrounding restaurants and bars. In Tel Aviv Museum of Art, you can get familiar not only with the largest collection of Israeli art, but also international art, represented by such names as Monet, Klimt, or Picasso. Take a walk or bike along Rothschild Boulevard, one of the first and most iconic streets of Tel Aviv. This commercial center with major financial institutions lining the street is full of kiosks, restaurants, cafes, and beautiful Bauhaus-style buildings. At night, you can find here the best bars and nightclubs. Less than three kilometers away from Tel Aviv, visit the ancient city and port of Jaffa. Jaffa Port is one of the oldest ports in the world, serving fishermen, sailors, and merchants for thousands of years. Take a boat to enjoy the view of the city or walk along Jaffa Promenade and enjoy delicious food in local restaurants. You must taste falafel, deep fried balls or patties made from chickpeas or fava beans or both. You will be impressed by Old Jaffa, which belongs to the oldest port cities in the world. One of its main attractions is Jaffa Clock Tower, which is not so old. It was completed only in 1901 and is one of seven clock towers built in Israel. Right next to Jaffa Clock Tower, you can find Jaffa Flea Market, where you can buy Persian rugs, jewelry, or antiques. Feel free to practice your bargaining skills. Number 10, Jerusalem. Home to several sites of the key importance and holiness of the three worldwide religions, Christianity, Islam, and Judaism. Thanks to the city's long 5,000 year history, you can constantly discover something new here. Not only the old city center with a traditional market full of colorful shops, but also the surrounding area is full of ancient and breathtaking attractions. The ancient walled old city of Jerusalem is traditionally divided into four uneven sectors, Jewish, Christian, Armenian, and the largest and most populous Muslim quarter. The fifth area situated behind the defensive walls is the Temple Mount, also known as the Haram al Sharif and is one of the world's holiest sanctuaries and one of the most contested religious sites on the earth with a deep significance for Judaism, Christianity, and Islam. This is where Abraham, the father of all three monotheistic religions, is said to have offered his son as a sacrifice to God, where Solomon built the first temple for the Ark of the Covenant, and where the prophet Muhammad is said to have ascended to heaven during the early years of Islam's preaching. It is the highlight of a tour to see the Dome of the Rock with its iconic golden dome glistening in the sun. Another must-see place is the Western Wall, often known as the Wailing Wall, the holiest site in Judaism. In the first century BC, Herod the Great began the expansion of the Second Jewish Temple. Although the Romans destroyed the temple in 70 AD, this famous segment of the wall is still standing. With an almost 300-year-old tradition, its visitors place slips of paper containing written prayers into the crevices of the huge white rock wall. If you want to experience the route of Jesus after he was condemned and walked towards his execution, visit Via Dolorosa. For most Christian visitors, this place is the most important part of their journey to the Holy Land. A round 600-meter walk begins in the Muslim quarter of the Old City and has 14 Stations of the Cross. The last five stations are at the Church of the Holy Sepulchre. It is believed to be the place where Jesus was crucified, buried, and later resurrected. Right after entering the church, you can touch the Stone of Anointing, also called the Stone of Unction. According to the Christian tradition, it is a slab where the body of Jesus was prepared for burial. Looking at the Edekil Shrine, 
where Jesus' empty tomb lies, will surely send shivers down your spine. The church interior is a spectacularly beautiful piece of sacral architecture and contains various holy relics. When visiting Jerusalem, do not miss the unique Yad Vashem, the World Holocaust Remembrance Center. This huge complex has both scientific study facilities and several monuments, memorials, and museums. Therefore, reserve at least one day for the tour. There is also the new Yad Vashem Holocaust Museum that opened in 2005. It is shaped like a triangle concrete prison that cuts through the landscape. The building consists of a corridor connected to 10 exhibition halls of interactive historical displays. These include photographs, films, documents, letters, artwork, and personal items found in camps and ghettos. The museum leads into the Hall of Names, the memorial to the six million Jews who were murdered during the Holocaust. On the upper cone is a display featuring 600 photographs of Holocaust victims and fragments of pages of testimony. If you've enjoyed this video and want to see more in the future, leave a comment, give a like, and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next video.